हेलो आई एम श्री कृष्ण कोल्हार फ्रॉम विद्याप्रतिष्ठान कमल नयन बजाज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस कोर्स ऑन सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम्स इन दिस लेक्चर वील सी द सैम्पलिंग थियरम एंड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अलाइजिंग वी नो दैट वी कैन प्रोसेस सिग्नल्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ एनालॉग कॉम्पोनेंट्स एज वेल एज डिजिटल कॉम्पोनेंट्स Processing signals with the help of analog components is known as analog signal processing, whereas processing the signals with the help of digital components is known as digital signal processing. There are various advantages of digital signal processing over analog uh, processing, such as uh, digital signal processing is flexible, means by simply changing the code uh, and keeping the hardware same, we can change the operation uh, operation of the system also it has uh, advantage that uh, the digital components are less sensitive to the environmental changes also the signals can be easily uh, stored onto the hardware for digital uh, systems that's why dsp is more preferred over uh, analog signal processing so uh we will see first of all the need of sampling so here we can see the digital signal processing system in which uh the first block is analog input signal because most of the signals that occur in nature are analog so analog signal uh, if it is to be processed with a digital signal processing system it has to be first sampled with the help of sample and hold circuit and then it has to be converted into digital form with the help of analog to digital converter which quantizes it and after the signal is converted into digital form dsp processor uh, performs different operations on it and uh, then again to convert that processed digital signal into analog signal digital to analog converter is used now Uh, in uh, this is the need uh, where the sampling theorem uh, is required or uh, when we want to convert analog signal into a discrete time signal the sampling is required now let us understand what is the sampling process so consider a continuous time signal x of t which is given by cos of omega t where capital omega is nothing but the analog frequency which is equal to cos of 2 pi ft now the sampled sinusoidal sequence can be obtained by substituting t equal to nt in above equation so x of nt it is equal to cos of omega replacing t by nt we get cos of omega nt that is equal to cos of small omega n where small omega it is nothing but the digital frequency where small omega is capital omega into t if t is the time interval between successive samples then discrete time signal can be represented by x of nt it is equal to x of n therefore x of n is cos of 2 pi n f by fs where fs uh, is the sampling frequency or you can say nyquist rate now we will see what is the concept of aliasing now one of the blocks that was present in dsp system was anti aliasing filter so uh, we will see what is the need of that anti aliasing filter so when we produce the signal x of n by sampling x of t we want to ensure that all the information in the original signal is retained in the samples there should not be any loss of information whenever we recover the continuous time signal from the samples this is possible if the sampling frequency fs is greater than or equal to highest frequency present in the input signal that is fm in general if the sampling frequency is fs all signals with frequencies above fs by 2 cause aliasing what is meant by aliasing the frequency is greater than fs by 2 uh, that is higher frequencies take on the identity of lower frequencies in the range minus fs by 2 to plus fs by 2 the superimposition of high frequency component on low frequency component is known as frequency aliasing now we'll see the sampling theorem that's why the sampling theorem is needed 
So whenever we will be doing sampling, the sampling theorem has to be satisfied and its statement is that a band limited continuous time signal with higher frequency FM hertz can be uniquely re recovered from its samples provided that sampling rate is uh, fs greater than or equal to 2 fm uh, samples per second that f where fs is the sampling frequency and fm is the max maximum frequency content of the signal so sampling theorem is that fs should be greater than or equal to 2 times fm so consider uh, the example uh, where three continuous time sinusoidal signals x1 of t x2 of t and x3 of, uh, x3 of t with frequencies 3 hertz 7 hertz and 13 hertz respectively are given so we can represent them uh, mathematically uh, as x1 of t equal to cos of 2 pi 3 t x2 of t equal to cos of 2 pi 7 t and x3 of t equal to cos of 2 pi 13 t now suppose these three signals are sampled with uh, the sampling frequency let's say 10 hertz so uh, uh, the dis corresponding discrete time signal is given by equation x of n is equal to cos of 2 pi n f by fs. This is the formula which uh, we derived uh, previously. So uh, by substituting value of fs is equal to 10 hertz, uh, we get the discrete time signals as x1 of n will be equal to cos of 0.6 pi n, x2 of n will be cos of 1.4 pi n. Now we can write 1.4 pi n as cos of 2 pi minus 0 0.6 pi into n. Now this is cos of 2 theta plus minus theta. So we can write uh, write it as cos of theta. So cos of 0 0.6 pi n. So x2 of n is cos of 0 0.6 pi n. Again x3 of n we can write uh, by substituting fs is equal to 10 hertz cos of 2.6 pi n. And uh, 2.6 pi n can be represented as cos of 2 pi plus 0 0.6 pi into n. Again, it, this is in the form cos of 2 pi plus theta. So it can be written as cos of theta. So x3 of n is cos of 0 0.6 pi n. Now here we can see that the three signals uh, which, which were obtained from three different continuous time signals uh, and uh, these three discrete time signals are uh, looking out to be same means they are indistinguishable this is because of inadequate sampling frequency uh, if the original signal is combination of these uh, three frequencies that is 3 hertz 7 hertz and 13 hertz then after digitization higher frequencies that is 7 hertz and 13 hertz pose as lower frequency that is 3 hertz this is known as aliasing this can be shown with the help of this diagram. Here we can see that on left hand side, uh, we are getting uh, three different continuous time signals for three different frequencies that is 3 hertz, 7 hertz and 13 hertz. But whenever we convert them into discrete time, uh, we are getting the same signal because uh, we cannot identify uh, the frequency of these three discrete time signals of which frequency they are. So they are looking out to be same and this is the effect of aliasing. This uh, discrete time signal uh, with frequency 7 hertz, it takes identity of discrete time signal with frequency 3 hertz or uh, discrete time signal with 13 hertz frequency takes on identity, uh, identity of uh, discrete time signal with frequency 3 hertz. This is because uh, we have considered uh, fs is equal to 10 hertz which is uh, not the adequate sampling frequency because the maximum frequency content of the signal is 13 hertz and fs is not greater than or equal to 2 times fm that is why this aliasing is occurring now let's uh, consider fs is equal to 50 hertz and let us obtain discrete time signals again so uh, the corresponding discrete time signals x1 of n is equal to cos of 0.12 pi n x2 of n is cos of 0.28 pi n and x3 of n is cos of 0.52 pi n and here we can easily say that these three signals discrete time signals are distinguishable this is because of adequate sampling frequency that we have taken f is equal to 50 hertz which is greater than or equal to two times uh, maximum frequency and maximum frequency was uh, 13 hertz so uh, fs is greater than uh, 2 times fm that is 
26 hertz so 50 hertz is obviously greater than 26 hertz so there is no uh, aliasing occurring here so if we select adequate sampling frequency there will no will be no aliasing and hence original analog signal can be recovered completely this can be illustrated with this diagram where we can see uh, uh, these are the three uh, continuous time signals with three different frequencies and after sampling them with uh, 50 hertz sampling frequency which is adequate sampling frequency we are getting three different discrete time signals and these three signals are distinguishable so we can uh, recover original signals from these three signals so this is the sampling theorem this is the concept of sampling and aliasing so the references i have taken from p ramesh babu's book signals and systems and digital signal processing thank you